Good morning, everyone. There, can you hear me? Yes, I can, I can hear my echo. Okay, I'm happy to see you. And I will welcome everyone and a special, a special welcome to Kira Clark, our organist for three weeks. Uh, Sandra has had her shoulder surgery and Kira is going to be with us. So thank you very much, Kira. Okay. So this week we ask you to keep in your prayers Connie Hodgson, Ruth Mitchell, Anne and Larry Gaskin. And we pray for the Admiston Pastoral Church and Pastoral Care Pembroke Regional Hospital. And by the way, the Admiston Pastoral Charge had the most wonderful nativity uh, service on Christmas Eve in the afternoon, outdoors with all the animals and uh, a real baby who behaved himself. Uh, I saw a video from my friends from Admiston. Uh, anyway, now for the announcements today, along with the ones in the bulletin, I've got a few extras. Um, we've got meetings, the stewards tomorrow, council on Thursday, us council people, don't forget to get those reports in by Wednesday at the latest, Should I think we're supposed to do it by today, um, so people have a chance to read, and we'll be looking at the budget for next year, so it's a big one. Ladies' breakfast next week, congregational meeting next Sunday, and that meeting will be a chance for you to vote on a motion that council approved last week, that we, so you have to agree as well, that we enter into a shared ministry arrangement with Zion Evangelical. And you'll get more details about it, but what it means is that uh, Zion will be paying for some of pastors' hours, and Wesley will be paying for the remainder of pastors' hours, and he will be working for the congregations at both churches. Um, oh, I was going to wave my tickets around for the card party. That's a week from... Thursday. It's on the 25th. Soup and sandwich lunch. It'll be delicious. And uh, then you can play whatever kind of card game you want. So I have tickets, or the stewards also have, but I would be delighted to brag about the tickets I've sold. Uh, if you are finding you are able to serve on council or a committee, there are positions that are looking for people, including a vice chair, because Rodina will be moving up into the chair of council position. Thank you, Rodina. And now for a couple of announcements, not in the bulletin. Um, a, a minor one, but um, here are a couple of books that I have taken from the double room downstairs, five, seven, but I've read them and I'm going to put them back. The Rumor family, when Peter and Lorna moved to Supples, they had, as you can imagine, a pile of books. They're all laid out in that room and you can help yourself. This novel by Helen Humphreys is wonderful. Um, so, Take a look at Coffee Time and help yourself to any books that appeal to you. They're on a whole range of, of subjects. A smaller uh, point, a uh, personal uh, plea uh, from a friend of mine. Um, the woman who made pierogies that a lot of us have enjoyed is looking to board looking for a room to board in close to the apartment where her family lives. Um, four people in a very small two-bedroom apartment is a challenge. And so she still needs to be close to her family to be doing childcare with her seven-year-old granddaughter. 
but uh, having a little bit of privacy for both parts of the family is what they're needed. So if you know of anybody who would be renting um, a, a room for a, a, a lovely woman um, who speaks English well and Ukrainian really well, um, then uh, let me know and I will talk with her. Um, and then uh, another notice that some of you may know, and uh, it is with, uh, with regret, uh, but also great thanks, that I am going to tell you that Melissa is with us today. That's not what I'm regretting. Um, but she is going to be leaving the position effective February 15th, and the Parish Nursing Council will be looking for someone else to try to fill those big shoes. Now, Melissa will uh, come and give us some details. Geez, it's a hard thing to talk about, right? Okay, so I know that there has been some rumor, and it is true. So as far as uh, the parish nurse, I will be leaving that in a paid position with uh, the Upper Ottawa Valley Parish Nurse Initiative. Um, it has nothing to do with the great love of the congregation here and also the other two churches that I serve. Um, there has been the most incredible incredible pieces as, um, yes, as a nurse, but as a human being and a follower of Jesus. There has been incredible, incredible experiences. Um, what I can say is that um, I hope that you know me well enough to know that me leaving in a position like this, I had to take care of my own mind, body, and spirit in this kind of position. What I would put forth, and it's not an answer that needs to be now, is that um, if you want it as a congregation, I'm offering it to the I'm offering uh, to do two Sundays a month in a volunteer position, and also I would want to do a Saturday a month with the soup kitchen at Wesley because there's some incredible progress going on. You got the health or you know the public health. Uh, provincial who is moving forward wants to constantly come and do things and stuff and it would just kind of extend um, so that would be so I am not leaving I'm not leaving in that kind of a sense I am staying here I'm not running to Cape Breton you know the valley has me and uh, I just uh, I have to take care of myself how can I be of any of a leadership or kind of show if I stay in something that is hurting me so I will offer that to the churches that I can do the same. You'd see me the same kind of thing that I would offer a drop-in clinic for Wesley one Sunday a month, do an education piece if wanted. Um, but again, fully volunteered. There are no strings attached. So um, just know that it has absolutely nothing to do with congregations or the beautiful outreach that we're doing and in reach. Just so I'm not, I'm not jumping ship, I promise. I promise. Melissa, we have a position available for you on the council. If you want it, you have it anytime. Good morning. It's wonderful to see you. And uh, it's amazing to see all of you here. You managed to dig out of that big pile of snow. Absolutely, I am in pain after shoveling snow yesterday, the whole day in Ottawa, I couldn't even see my car when I woke up in the morning. It was all buried under the snow. But here I am, the Lord is good. Again, welcome if you're here for the first time. It's amazing to be in the house of the Lord. Kira, you are amazing. And don't be intimidated with anybody here, right? You just do your job as comfortable as you can be. 
we begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional and unceded territory of Algonquin nations. We light a Christ candle, and again, as I said last week, we are not going to stop praying for peace in the Middle East. The situation is getting worse after every single moment. And we believe Christ who came to this world to bring peace. He will bring peace to that land. He will bring peace to this world. Our opening hymn, you, Will You Come and Follow Me, number 567. Will You Come and Follow Me, number 500. Before we were born, God knew us. God knit. God searches out our paths and tracks us along our way. So we praise God, for we are fearful and wonderful men. There is no way we can go where God is not with us. You may be seated, please.
Let's humble ourselves in prayer. God, ever creating, ever loving, ever leading, you are stillness when we are frantic. You are truth when we are perplexed. You give us freedom when fear takes hold. You send light when we have lost our way. You are love when we feel lonely and empty. You give us energy when we are ready to reach out. We praise you, Creator, Christ, Spirit, for all that you are, all that you have been, and all that you will be for us. In our worship, we offer you our love and loyalty, here and now, now and always. Together we pray. God of mercy and passion, you call us to follow you and offer our purpose and new possibilities. Yet we confess we often hesitate. We are not sure what we have to do. We will prefer that someone else take their lead and maybe we will follow them. Forgive us when we hesitate. Help us trust in you and what you have. Believe the good news in Christ. God has offered us forgiveness for all our sins and shortcomings. Trust that this forgiveness is for you and know that God's steadfast love and grace endures forever. Spirit of truth and life speak to us in the stories of scripture. As we listen, touch us with your word for our lives and for the times in which we live so that we may follow in the footsteps of Christ, your living word. Amen. Today I'm asking the young one to sit where they are because the parents are going to do the youth time. So the parents are going to do the youth time. And I can see everybody's looking at me and you're wondering what is the pastor saying? Yes, the parents are going to do the youth time. And this is how they are going to do it. So I'm going to ask one parent a question and then you will pretend that you are a kid and then you will answer the question as if you are a kid and watch out your age it cannot be over 12. So your, question, your answer should be for the kid age 0 to 12. Don't go above 12. Okay. Here we go. The first question is this. If you want to follow someone, who are you going to follow? I want one of the parents to answer as if you are at the age of zero to 12. Jesus. Huh? So, if you were in the world and you don't know anything about Jesus, who do you want to follow? Huh? Parents. Melissa? Huh? Your big sister. Um, I'll come back to that. Anyone else? Okay, so I'm done with the age 0 to 12. Now I'm going from age 12 to age 15. That is a very weird age. 12 to 15, very weird age. So I'm going to ask this, kina, this teenager, if you were going to follow someone, and I'm going to make this question a little bit uh, more clearly, if you are going to follow someone who will be the role model, who will that be? Now, when you answer this question, make sure that your age is between 12 and 15. Who is that going to be? age 12 and 15. 
Friends, I like that. Friends, friends, who else? My favorite rock star. Your favorite rock star. Uh huh. Teacher, uh huh. Someone else? Actually, eh? Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Did you hear Taylor? <laughs> Taylor Swift. Okay. Um, but I, I, I like one quest, one answer here that was said by Melissa. That's why I want her to be on the council. I will follow nobody except me. That's the age between twelve and fifteen. They don't listen to anybody except themselves. So these two groups, I don't want to go to 15 and above because at that time they have already found their brain, they think it properly, but that is the reality. The world we are living today, young people, remember this very carefully, you need to follow someone who is smart, wise, intelligent, someone who is going to be a role model in your life. And that will be your parents or your big sister or your big brother or someone important in the world. So I'm going to pray for you. I'm praying for the kids that are the age of 0 to 12 and 12 to 15 who are somewhere in the world. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for these young people. Some of them, they are wondering whom to follow. Touch their shoulders, Lord Jesus. Touch their minds so that they will turn around and follow you. Oh, someone who will be a good role model in their lives. Amen. Do we have a choir anthem? Okay.
Thank you. That was lovely. Now, our scripture reading this morning begins with uh, chapter 2 of Daniel, verses 1 to 23. Now, um, this uh, story took place about 500 years before the birth of Jesus, but scholars uh, have studied this and believe it was the book was actually written about 150 years before the birth of Jesus. So this uh, took place during the time that the Jews had been captured by the Babylonians and had been exiled from their country, had been taken. It's called the Babylonian captivity. Now, in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His spirit was troubled, and his sleep left him. Then the king commanded that the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans be summoned to tell the king his dreams. So they came in and stood before the king. And the king said to them, I had a dream, and my spirit is troubled to know the dream. Then the Chaldeans said to the king in Aramaic, which was the language of the people at that time. The, uh, o king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, the word from me is firm. If you do not make known to me the dream and its interpretation, you shall be torn limb from limb and your houses shall be laid in ruins. But if you show the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and its interpretation. They answered a second time and said, let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show its interpretation. The king answered and said, I know with certainty that you are trying to gain time because you see that the word from me is firm. If you do not make the dream known to me, there's but one sentence for you. You've agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me till the times change. Therefore, tell me the dream and I shall know that you can show me its interpretation. The Chaldeans answered the king and said, there's not a man on earth who can meet the king's demand, for no great and powerful king has asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or Chaldean. The thing that the king asks is difficult. No one can show it to the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Because of this, the king was angry and very furious and commanded that all the wise men of Babylon be destroyed. So the decree went out, and the wise men were about to be killed. They sought Daniel and his companions to kill them. Then Daniel replied with prudence and discretion to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. He declared to Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree of the king so urgent? Then, then Arioch made the matter known to Daniel. And Daniel went in and requested the king to appoint him a time that he might show the interpretation to the king. Then Daniel went to his house and made the matter known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, and told them to seek mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery, so that Daniel and his companions might not be destroyed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision of the night. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, 
Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, to whom belong wisdom and might. He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. To you, O God of my fathers, I give thanks and praise, for you have given me wisdom and might, and have now made known to me what we asked of you, for you have made known to us the king's matter. Now, the second reading is from Psalms. Psalm 139, verses 1 to 6. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Oh, and 13 to 18. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. Your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I could count them, they are more than the sand. I awake, and I am still with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Gospel according to St. John, I'll be reading verse 43 all the way to 51. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are called Cyphus, which means, which is translated Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, towards him, he said, to, he said of him, here is a truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you come from? Where did you, where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, 
I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, Rabbi, or Rabbi, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God descending and ascending upon the Son of Man. Lord Jesus, you have called us from the darkness to the light. Help us to spread the news of how good you are. Amen. As I say to the young one, it is not really a joke. It is serious matter. In the world we are living today, we are trying to follow someone. We are trying to follow someone. If you have ever went to the bookstore and you go to the section called spirituality or religion, depends. If I go, I always go to chapters, indigo, and there's a section they call spirituality. You will find an autobiography of people who have this devoted themselves to the spiritual life through the years. And very often they write about how they spend many years seeking out a spiritual leader to follow. They have, had, they have tried different ideas like uh, to read a story about very powerful religious person. Great philosopher. They have sat at the feet of great preachers and wise teachers teaching or trying to decide who to follow. But what is not the same for us as a Christian or as a Christians, that is not even an option because as John says, Jesus found Philip. Philip didn't find Jesus. Christ found Philip. The truth at the heart of the Christian story is not that you and I have found Jesus, but Christ has found us. I have heard a lot of stories about people trying to convince me how they came to know Christ. And I always listen carefully. At the end of the conversations, they always say, and I decided to follow, I decided to accept Jesus. And my question always will be, did you accept Jesus or Jesus accepted you? If you go to, um, we did not decide, we don't decide for God. We did not decide for God. God decided for us. And the narrative that runs throughout the Bible is of God who constantly seeking out his people. I am going to take you back to Genesis chapter 1. Probably not. Genesis chapter 3. Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit. Realizing they were naked and were embarrassed, so they hid. And in verse 8, God is walking in the garden and looking for Adam and Eve. In verse 9 of chapter 3, God is walking in the garden looking for Adam and Eve. He knew where they were hiding. But the, the Lord God called to, to man or to human or to Adam and Eve, where are you? Right from the beginning of the time, God has been seeking out and finding us. 
I'm going to fast forward this story all the way to Jesus. And Jesus, he gave example and he say, who has one penny or one ten dollars, you lose one. Or you have a hundred sheep and you're missing one. You are going to find that one. You are going to make sure that you find it. Turn that house upside down. Go to the wilderness. Look for that sheep until you find it and bring it back. The sheep will not find their way back. But Jesus went out looking for it. So let us never think that we choose God. He has chosen us. And once Jesus finds Philip, he issued a single command. When Jesus found Philip in the story, he issued only one single command. Follow me. Put Jesus as number one in our lives. That is what it demanded of us as a Christian. Philip is compelled to follow Jesus and live and leaves all else behind. His work, his family, his possession, his ambitions. It all has to go when we follow Christ. I once heard a greater young worker teaching us about discipleship and he said, if a young person say, can I be a Christian and still have a boyfriend? The answer is no. Like, really? Can I be a Christian and still enjoy a drink? The answer is no. Now, can I still be a Christian and uh, change the color of my hair? No. By the way, all the time I go to the hotel, my biggest complaint is the hair dryer does not work. And uh, some of you are laughing, you think that I don't have a hair. I do have a hair. We always put a condition before following Jesus Christ. We put a condition before we allow people to walk through those doors. Friends, let's remember this. To be a follower of Jesus Christ means keeping on going despite the knocks. Did he go on when Jesus told Philip, follow me? Did he ask him if he know the scripture? No. Did he join the church? Did he get baptized? The first thing he did, according to John, was first his brother, Nathaniel, and tell him about Jesus. The first rule of being a disciple of Jesus is very simple. Tell others, tell other people about Jesus. And what is so lovely, I think, is that Philip did not have any greater learning, and yet he was really effective in being an evangelist for Jesus. To be a follower of Jesus Christ, dear friends, is to allow people to come to us without conditions. I was looking at this document very carefully the other day, and then I said to myself the following. When we go out there into Pembroke area, or when we go for a ladies' breakfast, and someone else who is sitting to us at that ladies' table, who is not a member of this church, or that lady or that man during co men's coffee time, I don't know. But that time, somebody strange joined the group. And we tell him or her, come to Wesley. What will they find? 
Will people receive a warm welcome here? Will they get a sense of God changing lives? Will they have an experience of worship that gives them access to God? You may have noticed since I came here to be your pastor that I do service that some of you, you ask me, and when I visit people at homes, we sit down, we talk, they ask me questions, and I answer. And I say, I lead the service that doesn't have any affiliation with any religious denomination. Because that's not my job. The job of the council and the board or whatever you call it for this church is to hold this, the tradition and the liturgy, uh, sorry, the tradition and the organ of the organization that was formed since 1923. But the work of the pastors and the priest or whatever you call it, lay leaders, is to preach the gospel to all people. To lead the service that is welcoming to all people. So that if someone is opening those two doors and they walk in here and they sit down, at the end of the service, they will experience God in their lives. They will experience God when they talk to you. They will experience God when they go downstairs and have coffee with you. They will experience God as you spend a few minutes outside in the parking lot talking to them. They will experience God when you share with them the good news of who we are as a people chosen by God. Again, dear friends, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, if we ask people to come and see, what are they going to see here? I just want you to take a few moments to think about that and take that home. Ponder that for the whole week. When we invite people to come, what are they going to see? We are called into a life of peace and blessing with God. Are those people coming in going to experience peace and love of God? Jesus Christ is indeed a savior to be followed and it is a lifetime. It's a lifetime's work for us to live out these two simple instructions. Follow me and come and see. Today we follow. Today we come and we will see. I have a hymn for you this morning. This hymn is quite old, but I just want you to listen to the words in this hymn. Just listen to the words of this hymn as we sing it together. It will be out there.
behind it. It's only Jesus who can save. No one else. So when you hear someone or some religious institution or some kind of a group of people, cult, calling you, say that we can save you, tell them that I have sung a song somewhere that sings like this. Jesus saves and no one else. Amen? Can I have the offering, please? The offering is from us to the Lord. Let us pray together. The prayer is printed or we can follow on the bulletin. Together we say, God of new possibility, in Christ you have created a future for each of us, inviting us to flourish in our faith. Use us and the gifts we offer to create new possibilities for those who are uncertain about what the future holds, for we trust that you hold the future for us all. Amen. You may be seated, please. The prayer is also printed in the bulletin. Every section, every paragraph that begins with we, we will pray together. The paragraphs that begins with we, we will pray together. God of all life and each life, each week our prayers are combined with those of others in many different places. We face different challenges and yet we long for many of the same things things you offer in your grace and mercy. Thank you for your honoring our, all our prayers with the gift of your spirit so that we can find both the strength and wisdom to save you. Today we remember before you people living face to face with the war and the violence. In places where hatred has been stirred up and fear stalk people on their own streets. And we pray for all those displaced by conflict, especially in Yemen, Ukraine, northern Ethiopia, Israel and Palestine, Sudan, seeking refuge among us or all in camps and community around the world, God speak to us a word of peace. Embrace us with your love. We remember before you the people struggling in these uncertain economic times, those who have lost their jobs or worry about making ends meet. God speak to us a word of reassurance. Embrace us with your love. We remember before you people facing discrimination and social prejudice every day. Those who are bullied at school, at work, or at home, and those who are made ashamed of who they are, God speak to us a word of dignity. Embrace us with your love. We remember before you people facing illness and suffering in their lives or in the lives of those they love, those struggling with a disability and lack of access or need resources, and those who know grief or anxiety. God, speak to us a word of healing. Embrace us with your love. We remember before you your whole creation and its many vulnerable facets and faces. Teach us how to care for the world you love so we may live together wisely. God, speak to us a word of wisdom. Embrace us with your love. And so joining our voices to Jesus' followers around the world, we pray the word he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptations but deliver us from the evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us depart in peace and in love and in charity with our neighbors. May we be joined together in the common goal of service to our God and our country. Let us drive safely and careful to our homes and may God's blessings be with us all. Amen. We are marching to Zion. It will be also printed. I know. So, but this is the, there's two. One, the one that the one that is just sung. So can you put one there and then I'll say, which one do you have there, which one? So this is one here. We are marching here. That's a different tune. This is American version. This is American version, not South African version. Okay? So we go like this. Can you give me that? Give me the tune. No, she doesn't have it. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching. Oh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching. So we you repeat all of all of all of God. God. We are going to be here forever. You <laughs> repeat it twice. You repeat it twice. This is South African version. You repeat it twice. So I'm going to sing this myself, okay? <laughs> Don't allow me to sing that. I'm going to sing this myself, okay? Okay. We are marching in the light of God. 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 We are marching, we are marching, oh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, marching. So you repeat twice, like we are marching. So women then go a little bit. <laughs> All the women they have to go a little bit higher and men we go a little bit down. That is nature. That's how it has been. So we right, let's let's go let's do this again. Let's do this again. One, two, three, only one verse. Only one verse. There we go. We are marching in the light of God. 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 We are marching, 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 mar